Oh, you guys. So as you can clearly tell, we have blacked the deck. I don't know if that's how you say it. We have stained the deck with an opaque stain that happens to be the color black, which I don't know if it's all the colors combined or the absence of color. What do you think? Probably that. I don't know, I, because let's think about this. Light, white light is all the colors combined in light. In light. Right? And then in light, the absence of color and the absence of any light at all is black. Oh. Right? You can't project black. But... Or can you? But if you're mixing crayons, which is usually how I do it, yeah. and you get all the colors together, then you get black. So I don't know. I don't know. This is what I do know. You never look good trying to make somebody else look bad. Think about that. If you're sitting there and you're, if you're thinking, ah, I need to elevate myself by knocking this other person down and insulting them to somebody else when they're not there to defend themselves, so that then you feel like you're better, that never works. People see right through that and they're like, mm, I don't like you. Mm -hmm. Because if you're talking trash about them behind their back, you're probably talking trash about me behind my back too. And I don't want to be around people like you. So, Amen. Uh, maybe rethink your strategy and instead of insulting somebody else to make yourself feel better, why don't you just improve yourself? There you go. Huh. You guys again. Well, today, among other things, we got this rail up and it's filled with cables and turnbuckles and all kinds of cool looking stuff. So let's get closer. Come on over here, Jimmy. So we've got um, metal up here, which we painted, which is pretty cool. And then if you look, we got all these cables with turnbuckles on them. And what that means is that if these get loose over time, then you just tighten this up. And one of them's reverse threads and one of them's not. And so it just cinches it right up and then you get it tighter. And how cool is that? So I think it's a pretty cool look. Let's take a look down here. Oh yeah, that's nice. All that's, the way down. That's nice. So what do you want to talk about, Jimmy? Perfect. Yep. Here's what I got. Are you ready? I am. Now, this applies to, let's be honest, most of us. I think there's a lot of people that are living on glories from long ago, okay? You did something, I don't know, when you were a kid or you, when you were young or when you were younger, obviously not when you're older because that's not happening yet. And you're, you're, just, <laughs> <laughs> you're just living Sorry. off of that. Like, that's what I am. You're like, are you always gonna be a football star if you played in the seventh grade and now you're in your 50s? Or yeah, did you no. used to be a football star? Oh, I see where you're going with this. If you oh, continue yeah. to play football, then yes, you are continued. You're, you're still a football star. All right, so what am I getting at? I'm getting at this. He who lives in sin is a sinner, no matter what he calls himself and no matter what he may have been in the past. So if you're very confident, like, yeah, but blah, 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 blah. I said a prayer 20 years ago. <laughs> One save, always saved. Maybe... It's super duper important that you get this right and that you, not in front of other people, not in front of me, don't make a comment about it. You and God maybe get right and go, you know, if I'm being honest, I got some things I could work on. If I'm gonna have to give account for my life, maybe it's time to get that stuff right. All right, so tomorrow we're gonna do more stuff, but right now we're gonna go home because Jimmy's playing another show. Wahoo! Woohoo! <laughs> It's a little bit dark as usual and we're getting done and then i'm finally like oh you guys need to know what we're talking about um but today while i was working on the cable rail thing which is pretty cool and jimmy was painting underneath this deck which was painful we had <laughs> i mean i know it was because i was doing it yesterday um it's just monotonous oh my goodness it's monotonous uh we had a crew uh billy and sharon feaster's crew uh, be fast drywall and they were in here hanging sheetrock upstairs and downstairs and some in the garage too and i think they're gonna get all hung by tomorrow which is amazing i don't understand how they do it but they're just like zip, 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 and cutting 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 and, bah, 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 and next thing you know boom it's beautiful i'll show you tomorrow in the daylight how much better it looks but it's really amazing all right now there's a lot of challenges on the internet tide pod challenge where you eat a tide pod that's a dumb, <laughs> dumb thing there are a lot of dumb things i got a challenge for you guys on the internet you ready for this I want you to try not to get caught, but I want you to go and do something nice for somebody. What? Here's the important part. Try not to get caught by anybody. Don't tell anybody. Don't put it on social media. Don't tell your family. Don't tell your friends. Don't tell the person that you did it for. Just go and do something nice shh, and don't tell anybody. And then you can secretly watch and be like, ooh, they're happy. And then just don't tell them. 
You'll love it. Oh. <laughs> that was so weird that you guys were back there. And I was just, I'll, I'll tell you what it is, is that uh, we were listening to um, some Mexican music all day long, polka. Uh, sorry, Tano. <laughs> I get this too confused. And, uh, I, I felt like it was kind of giving me a seizure a little bit. Now, I, I don't know if there's a medical condition that makes you enjoy that kind of music, but I definitely do not have it. Um, so... <clears throat> We had a wonderful crew out here, and they knocked it out. I mean, all the sheet rocks up, and then Jimmy worked on this uh, black underneath the deck, which was great, and then I got all these cables run through um, the rail, and it looks so much better in here. Like, it looks so much better. But the crew <clears throat> was just here, and uh, they said, hey, amigo, and I'm like, yeah. And they said, uh, we got a, a magic trick for you. I'm like, all right, cool. And they're like, you ready? I'm like, I guess. I'm like, okay. On the count of three, uno, dos, and then they disappeared without a trace. Hello. So, I want to brag on what Jimmy did today. Now, Jimmy has played how many shows this week? Four? Oh, five, twenty. Who, who even knows? That's a lot, right? So, poor guy. His fingers have got to be just so exhausted. But he's also been doing all this work and doing a great job. So, you see all this black under here? That's a lot of work. But it looks amazing. Well worth it. And Jimmy has been slaving away for probably months on that, maybe, <laughs> yeah. maybe less, but, uh, but wow, what a significant difference that makes. Now, a lot of you are probably glad that I'm a contractor, among other things, among the 52 other things I do. But when I was younger, and even still sometimes today, people are like, you know, you should be a doctor. And I'm like, oh, that's very flattering. I assume they mean because I'm smart and I could go to medical school and I would be able to retain big words that had 17 syllables and things like that, which I can do. But uh, I was shocked to find out that really what it was is they're like, you should be a doctor because your handwriting looks like a bird stepped in some ink and then tried to cover up its own poop on the paper. God. That kind of hurts my feelings. That's, that's a feeling hurt. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I'm, I'm like, is my handwriting that bad? And they're like, John, yes. Like, seriously, go back to handwriting school or whatever, first grade or whenever you learn that kind of stuff. So off I go to the first grade. See you guys later. <laughs> so, Jimmy, Sir. what's the first letter of yellow? The first letter of yellow mm -hmm. is a Y. It's because I want to know. Why? Because I want to know. But why? <laughs> All right. Uh, so, <laughs> the other day, it was dark when we showed you this, but... Uh, all the sheetrock got up, and then they came yesterday and worked on a Sunday, which I'm so grateful for, and got all the first coat of tape bed done, which is amazing. They're just so fast. It's like if you fast forward a video real quick, then that's how they do it. All right, so what you want to talk about, Jimmy? Oh, let's talk about mm, patience. Patience is a virtue. It is a virtue. And um, also, isn't that a fruit of the spirit? What are the fruits of the spirit? Let me think. Hmm. Love, joy, peace, patience. Yeah, forbearance. Yep. Long suffering. Yeah. Uh, and self-control and which is uh, my favorite. Yeah, it's it's definitely I feel like a lot of people maybe lack self-control and they think that if they blame some condition <laughs> Yeah, I got bipolar Then it's not my fault Right that it's somebody else's fault or they're just born this way and they have no choice That then they can get away with acting badly, <clears throat> which I disagree with. I think the self-control is a fruit of the spirit therefore if you are living in the spirit, if you're living after God's own heart and obeying him, then naturally you will grow self-control. Word. At which point you won't be a glutton, you won't be an alcoholic, you won't Slothy. be a addict, you won't be you know, addicted to all the things that people are addicted to. Um, <clears throat> and so it's important to control yourself because if you are left without boundaries then you end up in trouble. Right? Yes, like, you do. Imagine a river without boundaries. It's just water everywhere. It's a flood. It's a big, messy, muddy, ugh, right? Yuck. But if you're like, hey, you know, this this river goes across here. Every once in a while it floods out to here, and then it goes back. Rather than just like, there's water everywhere. We live in a swamp. That's not fun. We're not Florida. No, we're not water world. That's Kevin Costner. Yeah, that's Kevin Costner. That's his, that's his gig. We don't want to steal that gig from him. No. So, there is dry land. I've seen it. Yeah, I'm on it right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's solid. It's a solid dry land. So, we were so excited. And you can also see the rail um, that we did on Saturday a little bit better now. Let's get closer to it because I feel like we have to turn this off. So what we did is we did all the metal 
my chemistry did all that. And we got all the steps and everything. These are temporary steps, but once we're done, you can tell why we put temporary on there because it's lucky. Um, and then we drill through here and put all these eye bolts through, and then we strung the cable through everything, and then on that side over there, there's turn So let's take a look. Yes. Oh, yeah, some control. Lots of on all this. And then we end up this our side. So uh, that was, and then boom, we got power buckles over here. And then these, like we said before, one side is regular threads and one side is reverse threads. So that when you twist it, it tightens it up. And uh, that's amazing. And I can't wait to worry the texture and paint and then start to finish stuff because that's just beautiful. Oh, hey there. So, uh, I was just down here in the underground cable because that's the kind of stuff that we do. All right, now, <clears throat> um, you notice that right here, there's an overhead power line, all right? So this is a telephone pole that we had put in and then one over here that we had put in, um, which was, you know, super cheap. And then um, <clears throat> the power company came this morning. You can tell there's a transformer up there, that big circle gray thing, that's a transformer. And so you got, um, you know, your power up here. So then they put ground rods in, that's what this is right here, this ground wire is here and then this wire here or this conduit here goes underground they dug this trench today and then goes up to where our meter base is over there and you can see the wire sticking out so then they will the power company will come and hook it up over there at which point we'll be energized in the house which is great and then they'll bring this up the mast and then hook it up to here at which point we will be we'll have power in the house which is really great and then we'll lose this temporary power pole because we've had this for a while there's this temporary wire right here and then um, they'll disconnect that and I can take that back to my house and use it on the next house which will be coming up soon I'm so excited well, uh, uh. <clears throat> now in my office um, so first of all I like to read a uh, daily devotional in the morning because let's be honest I'm not a good person and so I need something to like get my day started in the right direction I think it's important so I read our daily bread and I have for decades and so now I do it on my phone, but I used to do it like a paper thing. And there was one that stuck out in particular to me. Um, and so I've got it up on my wall in my office and it's about the discus thrower. Okay, so <clears throat> this guy, I think he was Scottish uh, back in the 1800s. He was like, I want to throw the discus in the Olympics and I want to win and like break the world record for discus throwing. And so he goes to the library. I'm sure you guys have heard of these, like back in the 1900s, people went to them <laughs> and before. <laughs> He found the exact dimensions of a discus. He made his discus to that exact dimension. He paced off in his, on his property. This is how far it is for the world record. And he started to throw this discus every day, all the time, in all his free time, until finally he could hit that mark every single time or pass it. And he's like, now I'm ready to try out for the Olympics. So he shows up and they're like, sir, here's your discus to throw. And he picks it up like, what's this little light thing? I'm like, it's a discus, it's regulation. He's like, no, but I've been using this. <gasps> Turns out <clears throat> he did not realize that the discus they used was made out of wood with a very thin coat of steel on the outside of it, at which point it looked like it was steel. He made his out of solid steel, which was significantly heavier. Therefore, this dude is like, <sighs> and it took him a long time to get to the point. He's like, man, these guys are tough. And he finally got it to hit past the mark every single time. Well, when they give him this light little frisbee, he's like, oh yeah, well watch this and he throws it, you know, to the far side of the next mountain, at which point nobody touches his record for decades. Um, and so why is that important? Why is that significant? Because maybe your life is difficult. Maybe you look around and go, everybody else seems to be doing better than me. Maybe you're carrying a heavy weight that you don't know nobody else is carrying. And that's making you stronger. And then you have big muscles and then you use those muscles. And then God's like, you know what? I got just the thing for you. I've kept you in the dark to some degree because this will make you stronger because I have something special for you to do and you're going to be a champion right so I keep that up in my uh in my office as a reminder that even though maybe sometimes my life seems harder than what others would consider to be fair then maybe there's a good reason for that and God's making me strong um, <clears throat> in Ezekiel it talks about I'm sending you out to people that are stubborn and pig-headed he goes I will make your head like flint I will make it hard. You will, like, you will go into this people and they will not be able to overcome you because I am making you tough because it matters because I know what kind of people I'm sending you towards. And so maybe God's making you tough for some good reason. Oh, hey there. So uh, welcome to yet another episode of Offensive Driving. It's a class I teach. Um, 
they have defensive driving already for people that I, don't, I guess want to be defensive or whatever. But I got nothing to be defensive about, so I'm offensive because the best defense is a good offense. True. I don't know if that's accurate. Um, so a lot of people think that we just teleport to the job site every day and then back home, but it's not true. We have to drive. And I use this truck, and uh, I got an oil change last month, but then I realized I'm 2,500 miles over uh, due for my next oil change. So I just got one. I feel a lot better. Now, if you're anything like me, you probably think a lot. And um, one of the things, try not to hit the work convoy. One of the things I like to think about is, yet again, is um, if somebody got several life sentences for whatever reason, does that mean they got a life paragraph? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> And, like, if they're, like, a mass murderer, you know, like, is it a life book or a life chapter? Like, is there a, a unit of measure that goes beyond just, like, one life sentence, which is pretty lame, you know? But, like, oh, I got a life book. And you're, like, really? Like, an encyclopedia? And you're, like, no, man. Like, the whole Harry Potter series. I'm almost on part two of part seven of the Harry Potter series. Right. Like, how many sentences makes a paragraph? Right, yeah. I, I don't even know how many sentences you would need to make an entire series of books like that. I feel like... You'd have to kill so many people or do a lot of bad, bad things. Don't do that. Don't let that be one of your life goals. No. I'll tell you what else you shouldn't let be a life goal. <clears throat> driving badly. But let's just say that somebody is driving badly, like this guy in front of me who's got a quarter mile ahead of him that insists on being in a fast lane going five miles over. So <clears throat> once I pass him, you know, a lot of people would want to give him the finger, but I don't. I give him the thumb, the thumb of fury. That way he knows he really messed up. And if they're really bad, then I add in the smile of discontentment like this. And then they know I done screwed up. That's how they knew. That's pretty much it. The end. All right. Hello there. Um, so today we did some touch-up stuff, but you may not know. Or if you remember, do you guys have memories still? Sure. Put on your thinking cap. Yeah, I got mine in my pocket. Is, is that's what this little pocket here is for in your jeans? Oh, there it's because it's tiny. It just rolls right up. Oh, okay. Yep. I'm remembering, I'm remembering Snowmageddon last February, and now it's February 2022, and I think you know what's going to happen. Another Snowmageddon. It's going to happen. So, what do you guys need to do? This is your friendly reminder. Drip your pipes, cover up all your hose bibs outside. That's where you hook your hose to, and you turn that on. <clears throat> and then also open up your cabinet doors on any exterior walls. Why do you do that? Because heat escapes from your house, but with the cabinet door shut, less heat escapes into your house and so underneath your sink is probably going to freeze and then you have a burst pipe and then that's expensive and troubling um so don't do that and then you run your water you drip your water especially on exterior walls because dripping water doesn't freeze as easily now speaking of water there are lots of people in the world that don't have access to clean drinking water in fact it is the number one killer in the world far above the c word of it. Uh, so, like so far away. So I think it's close to, I'm gonna misquote this, 20 or 30% of the world's population, it might be bigger, does not have access to clean drinking water. It, I think, it, I wanna say it's like a billion, maybe more people. That's terrible. It is, it's horrible, right? And so Africa is a place that is hit hard by this, okay? Because you have to dig so deep to get water and so on. Uh, so if you want to dig a well in the Philippines, you dig like three feet down, you're like, oh, water, right? There's a lot of places like that, and it costs $300 and you make a well. And then the village drinks off of that water and you're fine. In Sub-Saharan Africa, it's twenty dollars to $25,000 to dig a well. And so obviously they don't have that kind of money because they're making, if you're doing well, you m might make 50 cents to a dollar. I'm trying to remember if it's a day or an hour. It's not much. I mean, it's like, such a small number, right? So for them to get enough money to pay for something that we consider very basic takes, well, it's not doable, it's not realistic. So, as you might've known, there have been many people over the years that have gone and dug wells in Africa. And thank God for these people, because otherwise the people in those villages have to walk four hours one way sometimes to get water and put it into a can that is dirty water and then carry it, usually on their heads, all the way back to their village. And then they're very sparing with it. So they usually don't bathe and 
wash their hands and you know it's unsanitary and there's disease and things like that but also just drinking water at all or cooking is very very difficult um, so when somebody comes and digs a well in a village then it changes the whole dynamic of the village now over time these wells may stop working okay here's what they do when the well stops working they just go back to walking four hours a day because they don't know how to fix it they don't have the tools and they're not you know, really prepared for this. So there's a group of people in my church that I'm very grateful for that have a calling on their life that say, we think the best way to get the most amount of water to the most amount of people for the least amount of money is to go and repair wells that are already existing in Africa. So they've already got um, a few villages that have wells that are, they're not working. Now, these wells cost one to five thousand dollars each to fix and then an entire village will have access to clean drinking water so um, they asked me to help out with that and i'm happy to do so and so if you guys would like to be a part of that either financially or otherwise then let me know and i will get you in touch with the right people because i think that that's the type of thing that changes somebody's life to us it's like yeah yeah i mean here's a tip or whatever you know like you don't even notice it it's just extra, right? You could have a little bit more or you could change somebody's life and not just one person, but an entire village or maybe multiple villages or whatever. And I think that kind of stuff is a huge investment. And God says in the Bible that he who gives to the poor, listen to this out. He who gives to the poor lends to the Lord and he will repay him which means he's gonna pay you back with interest in this life and in the next. Now, that's not why you do it, okay? You do it because it's the right thing to do. But God's like, I see what you do. I own literally everything, and I'm gonna reward you for that. So if you wanna be a part of this, I'd love to. Um, we are gonna go and do more work. Hello. If you're anything like me, you probably sit around wondering things like this. Are there shadows on the sun? I don't know. Please comment because I have no idea. There's a lot of scientific stuff I do not understand. And according to the comments on my post, most of you are amazing scientists. So please tell me that one. Um, also, if all the people in the world, hear me out on this, held hands around the equator, I think a significant number of those people would probably drown. Jimmy, what do you think? More than half, yeah. Yeah, I think a large percent, probably seventy percent, just on average. It yeah. depends on details, but depends on how many of them stand on the other side. <laughs> you have to stand on a lot of people because <laughs> some of that stuff's kind of deepish. Um, so, it has occurred to me that there are people in the world that think two things that are both a misconception. One, I'm too bad to go to heaven. Two, I'm too good to go to hell. Both of these are a lie. Let me explain what I'm talking about. A lot of you think, if I walk into a church, I will be struck by lightning. If I walk into a church, God does not love me. I've done too much bad stuff. God can't forgive me for what I've done. You don't understand. You don't know my heart. You don't know what I've done. And God cannot and will not forgive me. And he does not love me. In fact, God probably hates my guts. That's a sad place to be. I've been there. That's a sad place to be. And I'll tell you, it is, it melts a heart of stone when you realize that God loves us so much that while we were yet sinners, he died for us. Before we did anything that mattered, he's like, I love you enough that when you are beating me and nailing me to a cross, I will still die for you. That's how much I love you. So if you think I've done too much bad stuff to come to God, stop thinking that because it's not true. God loves you. God loves people in prison. God loves alcoholics. God loves drug addicts and prostitutes and strippers. God loves people that watch porn. God loves people that are, have been thieves. God loves people that have murderers. Everything you can imagine, God loves those people. And he says, I take no pleasure in the destruction of the wicked. None. I want them to repent. I want them to come home. I want to have full fellowship with these people again. So if you're one of these people, and we all are, then just know that God loves you and you have another chance. So take that opportunity while you still have time. There's a second group of people. This group of people I cannot identify with, and I'm sorry if you're in this group. I am too good to go to hell. I'm like, what? Do you really believe that? I get to charity every month. Do you really believe that you haven't done enough bad stuff to go to hell and God wouldn't do that to you or whatever? 
God doesn't send you to hell. You send you to hell. And one of the seven deadly sins is pride. Like, seriously, pay attention. All the people, if you're like, oh, I'm not like those people, you're like, you're exactly like them. You're the Pharisee. You're the hypocrite. What are you talking about? Right. You th you're, the, you're the older brother in the prodigal son story. You're like, all the bad people that Jesus talks about are the religious, like, hmm, 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 hmm. So, my nose up in the air. Right, so if you think that you are too good to go to hell, let me give you a reality check. You're not. You can also repent. Just like the other people, just like the rest of us, dirty, nasty, gross people that nobody wants to be around, you can also repent from what you're doing. But you gotta get over your pride. You gotta get over yourself because that is not accurate. All right, so hopefully this isn't too windy of a video because it seems to be my lot in life right now. All right, so I just wanna tell you, I really hope that this snowstorm hurries up and passes because I can't get out of my house to get to the grocery store. And I'm almost out of food. Look, that's all I got left is just this little bit of bread and peanut butter. And then I guess I'm going to die. But look, I'm willing to trade. I've got some popsicles and I've got some ice. And I'm willing to trade with anybody who needs that during the snowpocalypse. So just keep that in mind. I'm starving to death. Apparently everybody thinks that I'm some broke bachelor that never cooks or whatever, but I got plenty of food at my house. I just make stuff up. So take a look. I'm just going to show you in my fridge. There's plenty of stuff in there. I got that V8 splash stuff. And look, there's part of another V8 splash. There's some water. <laughs> you guys are so weird to think that I'm like that. Huh, you guys. So um, we've survived another snowmageddon in Texas. It was the worst blizzard that we've had all year. We had almost a half inch, maybe three eighths of an inch of snow that then froze and then melted and then froze and then melted as it went away and the world stopped. Nobody's done anything because last year the power grid shut down and so everybody was afraid. But then you know what happened? Nothing. All right, <clears throat> so here's what's happened here since we've been gone. Also nothing. <laughs> we've been doing a whole lot of nothing. Um, a couple things I want to tell you. Number A is that you don't have to tell a giraffe to hold its head high. Think about that. And secondly, God has a lot of children, but he doesn't have any grandchildren. Now let's think about that for a minute. What does that mean? That means that you don't get to go to heaven on your parents' salvation or on somebody else's salvation. You don't get to say, I know this person and they're very spiritual or very godly or very Christian, therefore I am going with them by proxy. I'm gonna grab their coattails and ride on in. No golden tickets. Incorrect, right? So what is gonna actually happen is you're gonna stand before God and he's gonna be like, what did you do? What is your decision? And you're like this. <laughs> I, uh, I know that person and they're a pretty good dude. And he's like, that's nice. What did you do? Right. So think about that. Think about it real hard. Then go find a quiet place. Then repent and get right with God. It's like our tapers are here. That makes me very happy. All right, bye.